Hello, hello, hello. I am so happy to be back. And you know, I have to wait for a second because I don't see anybody yet. Here we go. YouTube is launching. Let's see how fast I can kill hello, the video. Hello. Oh, hello. all right. I didn't kill the video as fast as I did last time. Oh, no, I've ruined everything. Oh, man, I screwed everything up. Hold on. Sorry. I was so good at it for a while. <laughs> oh my God. It's a nightmare. It's all, it's all, it's all going so well, particularly when I have um, a very important guest here. All right, hold on. I got to kill this. I got to kill this because I accidentally advanced to the next video. So I have to now find you all. <laughs> oh my God. It's horrifying. Uh, no, hold on. Oh my God, Nora, I hope you're not watching. It's usually so much smoother than this. People can, people can attest to the fact that it's normally smoother than this. Okay, there. Now, whew. Okay, I finally loaded this. And um, once again, the chat is not loading. So I'm going to do that thing that I did before, which is um, say something. Hi, are you all here? Because I see people are here already. Okay. So hopefully the chat will start to load soon. Dang it, I'm so embarrassed. That was really, that was a rougher start than usual. All I have to do is reach forward and kill the, the volume, but I hit advance. So it ended up playing the next video. Um, yeah, so it's all going very well. Anyway, and now I can't move the... Okay, there. Chat's loading. I don't know what the deal is now where the chat's taking so long to load. Um, hello from Mexico. Hello from Montreal. Hello. Oh, God, help me. All right. So now that that horrifying start is gone, hello from Denmark, Oregon. Hello. Um, I just had the most lovely walk out in the snow, but the sun was out. It's like 40 degrees out. Um, I got a new sweater from Uniqlo for $10. I know I should be wearing my hand that tonight. I normally am, but, um, but, uh, yeah, YouTube does have a bug. The, the chat is not loading until I say hello. And then the chat loads, but anyway, um, okay. So God, Nora just called me professional anyway. Um, I'm so thrilled for this particular one. Um, before I, before, so my guest is really terrible at me saying nice things about her when she's paying attention. So I'm going to get this out of the way while her camera and mic is off because she can't do anything about it. So there, I mean, she's listening. She can't do anything about it. Um, many years ago, when I was a, stage manager back in the days um, when I was working in theater. Uh, I was, I used to work with this, I'm not gonna say her name, but the very famous director choreographer. And she, we were talking about, you know, all the amazing people she's worked with. And, and I said, well, is there, you know, is there anyone that you haven't worked with? And she said, well, there was one person and I'm very glad to have not worked with him. I said, oh, why? She said, because he was my hero and he also was a terrible person. <laughs> so she never wanted, she was glad she didn't get to work with this particular person who's also very famous because although he was brilliant, she knew he was very difficult and she was worried about if she worked, got to work with her hero, um, she, she'd be heartbroken. It wouldn't be a good experience. On the other hand, uh, I got to meet my hero many years ago, who we're going to have on the show today, uh, and have gotten to work with her many, many, many times over the years. And let me tell you, not a disappointment. She's as delightful and charming and just freaking adorable as she is um, unbelievable, unbelievably talented. Oh, Charlotte. Yes. Charlotte also agrees um, about my knitting hero. Uh, so 
now that I got that out of the way and she couldn't say anything about it, ah, I'm so excited to welcome the one, the only, Wild. See, I got it right, over with before you got here. <laughs> First, I have to say hi to Charlotte in Denmark. Yes, she's here. She's here. She um, I I, I she said on Instagram, oh, uh, in a message to me, say hi to Nora. And I said, oh, I hope you can join us and then say hi yourself. And she's oh, she said, oh, it's it's going to depend on the time. And then this morning, she messaged me and said, actually, I'm going to be here. And she's mm -hmm. already messaged here, um, my knitting heroes, you, oh, me, oh, and sweet Nora. Oh. <laughs> so um, see how professional I am? That was the worst start ever of a live. That was the worst start ever. <laughs> what happens is it takes a long time to go live. So I have to like vamp and kill time while what I see is just a white screen with a red thing scrolling. But the first time I went live, I was sitting here while the red thing was scrolling. And then it started and I'm like, hello. And then when I watch the playback, it's 30 seconds of me going, oh no. <laughs> Cause it's actually live while it's scrolling. So then I have to leap forward and kill the volume but instead I advance to the next video by accident. Right. So smooth as silk. I'm glad to know I'm not the only one. <laughs> oh my God. I remember when we used to worry about like knitting and yeah. maybe developing classes or a new pattern and now we're talking about the settings on ring lights right <laughs> it's so annoying and like where to put the light so it doesn't do look. that yeah because <laughs> i moved mine way off to the side all right hi hi nice to you. <laughs> really my quarantine lives are just so that i can see my friends that i miss that works i know so how the heck, oh, see, I'm not going to swear. How the heck are you? I can swear. So I'm doing okay. I cannot wait for the winter to be over. And it is 40 something here today. So oh, it's so wacky. Cool. And then you have to know how much I love you, Patty. Like today happens to be a book deadline. And I am here talking to you. I'm so sorry. It wasn't your fault. I think I said yes to no to you before I knew what the extension was going to be. But oh, oh, I was going to say, but you got an extension. But you're saying this. No, my is extension. Well, it's a long story. I won't go. This into is the story. extension. This was the extension. Oh shoot. Okay. Um, you know what? You probably wrote enough by now. So I would just wherever you're at, just, just end it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's fine. Um, how are the chickens? We got new chickens and they are laying a dozen eggs a day. Does anybody live in New Hampshire near me? Because I got eggs. <laughs> are you kidding me? Okay, no. so souffles. I mean, what? So pickled eggs. John's on vacation this week. He's making oh. pickled eggs. No. Really? Oh, no. Oh, I like pickled stuff. <laughs> I also don't like deviled eggs, but that's just my thing. No, they're not um, deviled. They're pickled. No, I know. I don't like pickled eggs. I also don't like deviled eggs, which everybody likes. Okay. I'm just, I'm that person, but I do love a souffle. All right. Too bad I can't ship you eggs. It's too bad. It's, the, it's like a four and a half hour drive to your house. I can't do it. I know. You know, you know who's taking a four and a half hour drive um, almost to the Canadian border in a couple of weeks? You? Because David got a, vac a vaccination appointment, but mm -hmm. he could, because he's on the, he's in the high risk uh, due to his severe asthma. So he got added to the, the next batch. He has to go but um, wow. uh, in New York, it's madness mm -hmm. as far as trying to get an appointment. So uh, after days and days and days of hitting refresh, he said, well, there's one place that's got appointment, but it's almost at the Canadian border. I'm like, T take it. Right. So um, my husband got his first one because he's old. <laughs> no, he's 68. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it's yeah, not any way to talk. Either, but, yeah. but how you got one right away? Your state's normal. He not got he signed up the day you could sign up and with it and got an appointment and within a few weeks he got it. And now he has a little card that says when he's gonna get the second one. <laughs> See, New York doesn't have a sign up oh. like normal states. It's like 
trying to get the tickets to King Tut. Remember that? No. Just hitting refresh on Ticketmaster. That's it's it's like getting concert tickets. Like my mom in Illinois, she signed up, put her name on the list. It's madness. It's sheer madness. Oh, Charlotte wrote in all caps. Hi, Nora. Hey, Charlotte. I love Charlotte. I met her on the island of Bornholm. Anyway, we're, we were teaching together. Oh, delightful. It was oh, delightful. Fancy. Look what I have. Yay. This is last year's book. So picture me in January of 2020. What was last year? 2020. It's the year that I'm not really sure we'll ever forget. I know. So that's what I finished. The year's so terrible, they named it twice. That's right. I know I won't forget it. But that's when I was struggling to finish that book was January of last year. And, and now, now I have one too. <laughs> now, are, are we allowed? I should have asked you this before we went on camera. I'm not allowed to know. Am I allowed to know what? the topic of the next book is or is that a secret that's probably i don't a know if that's a secret i've told a lot of people oh you but have it's not a dictionary kind of thing it's different well if you've told a lot of people all right it's about folding it's called knit fold pleat repeat it's out there right what what <laughs> It's about constructing sweaters a little differently. I mean, a lot of people are constructing sweaters differently, but I've been thinking about this for a long time and collecting tear sheets and inspirations and looking everywhere for a long time. And finally, the book came to be. Almost, just a little bit more writing. Anyway. I'm super intrigued. Now that does sound like I was, we were talking before we went live about this post that I put on Instagram which was a quote I heard from a lecture that you gave. And it says, those who do not want to imitate anything produce nothing, Salvador Dali. And you gave it in a lecture um, at, well, I couldn't remember where, but you said Vogue. I'm sure it was Vogue Knitting Live. And, uh, you know, for me, people like you seem like you're just, have a million ideas at all times they just flow out of you you just wake up you roll out of bed in the morning you're like oh here's 20 ideas let me jot them down quickly no. and and that so on the outside that's how it feels for those of us that aren't you right ideas do not come out of nowhere you you cannot sit in a vacuum and think up ideas and get very far so I collect loads of things. Pinterest is where you collect things now. So I have loads of Pinterest boards and you get ideas, a collar shape, a construction, um, anything, anything weird or new to you and use that as the kernel of your idea for a sweater. And without that, I wouldn't have knit or designed the like thousand something sweaters in my life like you need something to hang an idea on and then once you get going and you're doing a lot of that you know there are variations on your own idea that come about then you can wake up and say all right I thought of this this and this right but you have to have a start like it took me forever to design that cable mm -hmm. oh affinity hat affinity mittens which is what I ended up doing there you go <laughs> what like use the work that you've already <laughs> done there is no shame in it but the other thing is someone posted something that is uh, uh, on this that I also really um, connect with, which is the idea that there's a zeitgeist and everyone's working on their own things separately. So you might have been working very hard on something for quite a long time. And then you see somebody else doing something or having, or maybe have already published it, that's similar to this thing that you are pretty far down the road on. And do, do you, and she said, you know, then I feel like, oh, well now I can't do it, which I totally that's, connect yeah, with. That's really hard, but that thing happens. Like maybe the two of you did look at the same thing on Pinterest or something on a wrong way, or maybe it's just that those kinds of stitches are popular right now and you come together and you've designed the same thing, but you didn't even know the other person was doing it. 
Yep. I actually think the key is handling that gracefully and don't accuse someone else of copying you and don't, you know, because, <clears throat> because it happens and you have to move on. Oh like, yeah. Like and, the, there was, yeah. there, do you have a, um, I can't remember whether it was radio lab. There was a show about it. Uh, for for books and screen, it was about books and screenplays, mm. and about how um, do you know the movie um, Yesterday? It's about uh, it's about a guy that has an accident and he wakes up one day in a world where nobody oh, only he I've remembers the Beatles. Oh yes, I definitely seen that one. Yeah. Okay, no one else remembers. Yeah, a guy wrote a book that is that story. And then this screen, this screenplay came out at a festival and he was like, that's my story. Except he knew there's no cross pollination. They don't know anyone. There's literally no possible way that the screenwriter could have stolen the idea from him. It's a book, it's a manuscript. And, right. and, and, and the, so this radio show was about like four different examples of that. Yeah. Of where that just happens sometimes but has it ever 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 happened to you it has happened to me and it's happened where i looked like the bad person oh, so no. one time i designed a hat that was based on um it was based on a round blanket i had done for the comfort knitting and crochet afghan or baby book and i just it had a sort of roundish cable with ribbing in it and I designed a hat from that and some someone on Ravelry pointed out to me in a very nice way actually that um that someone else had a hat that had been out there for several years that looked almost identical and I had no knowledge of the previous hat and that person was very lovely as well and realized that they come about separately but yeah I have uh, <clears throat> oh this actually this this cowl I had designed for a class that I that I taught and it has all these different techniques on it. And then it ended up being, you know, that. And, and I keep hearing one or the other. Either people say, oh, you stole that from Ann Weaver, Yipe Stripes. Or people say, oh, Ann Weaver stole your thing for Yipe Stripes. Now, the reality is we were both completely separately. Like, right. yes, this was, this was designed first, but wasn't published first. I think good. we should get over the culture of accusing everybody. I know it's nuts. And, and knitters sometimes think they're being helpful. Like, oh, did right. you know someone, you know, right, right. <clears throat> it just happened to me a, a couple of years ago with a sweater of yours, which is my maker feature for Vogue, mm -hmm. um, which is oh, over there somewhere. Um, so there was a, apparently a little discussion thread on Ravelry that uh, it looks exactly like a, a an old Nora Gone design. Now they named the design and I looked at the design and I think they look quite literally nothing alike. Right, right, right. Other than their long, mm. their longish sweaters that kind of swing out and don't button and they have cables in them. Right. Yeah. You should be able to do another dozen or two that fit that description and so should I. <laughs> Right, you should. Um, it's like you know a drop sleeve sweater. You would never accuse someone of stealing that shape, right? Drop sleeve tee of a sweater, and right. something like a swing shape. It, you know, it's the same thing. Even if, if it might be a little more unusual, it does, you don't have a copyright over that shape, which is why I think people don't have copyrights for pattern stitches. Right. So this book that we we have here. <clears throat> has 125 patterns, which I didn't really do that on purpose as a segue, but um, 125 pattern stitches in it. And the photographs are copyrighted and the char charts are copyrighted, but the stitch itself is right. not. It's open for everyone to use, which is what I wanted anyway. When I was a young designer, I used Barbara Walker books all the time. And that was a compilation of things that she had made up or gathered. And this is for designers to use. Right. Like, I mean, why would I have a stitch dictionary if no one could use it? Yes. Oh my God. The number of times someone, someone has said, well, I think that someone, they took that from a Barbara Walker dictionary and they should. Yeah. Have it well, I don't think anyone publishes a dictionary thinking, well, I don't want anyone to use these. 
Right. It, they're to use. That's what it's for. I do love it if like you're putting your design on um, on Ravelry and there's a little shout out, but it's really not necessary because yeah. the dictionary is out there and it's to be used. I mean, they're, they, the other thing about knits and pearls is to be honest, which is why people like you freak people like me out because I don't know how many, how you can come up with that many different ways to arrange them, but there it's are funny. only so many ways to arrange a knit and pearl. I mean, there's two that stitches. Might, it might be infinite. I don't know, but things are going to start to look similar. Yeah. I mean, I like to work in series. I mean, you can, you can see when you look through this book that things are related. Yeah. There's a stitch that later gets filled with another stitch that later gets filled with something else. And I actually like to show that in the book. Um, and I like how you use the different colors that- I want other people yarn. to think of it. Yeah. Do you want me to show? Yes, please. Okay. So I have queued up, it'll just take me a, a slideshow do with like that some one. stuff from the book. I like that one too. I love that one. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna show, this definitely doesn't show everything, but I'm gonna share my screen. Oh my God. And where is it? Keynote, share. Oh, Ooh. And okay, then I now. play and you'll see it bigger, right? You should be able to yeah. see Yeah, hold on. I'm going to look at, uh, 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 I just want to look at how it looks on, uh, oh, well, it's for a second delay, so I can't look. Yeah, no, I think I think yours is big. Good. So I, 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 it should be. <laughs> so just because it's you, Patty, um, I'll do this. I haven't done this any other time I showed my book, but on this cover, there's a little knitting mistake. Can anyone find it? Wait, I want to find it. You want to find it. I don't. All right. I can't give you too many minutes before I oh, show you. Oh, right? maybe? Yeah. Oh, it's actually, I'm going to have to describe it because right now my cursor doesn't work. Um, okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can I, uh, uh, can you I, can describe it. Let me see if I can. Oh, no, I can't draw on it. Is it? Um, OK, so you have the two garter stitch sections on either side of the big um, center thing. Yep. And the decreases on the the one that stay. Oh, my God. Really? Was I just about to say stage left? Um, sure. <laughs> sorry. Stage left or for a normal person to the right. Is, is that where we're looking at? Yeah, so you look at that and then you go to the top and there are diagonals going off to the right and to the left. And on the left one, there's one crossed the wrong direction. Yeah. And somehow it made it to the cover anyway. Anyway. <laughs> but I wouldn't have noticed unless you pointed it out. Good. Yeah, well, FYI. we did obviously. All right. So the book itself is in three parts. And the first part are the stitches, which I think is like really the meat of the book. Um, they're 125 and they're categorized in eight sections. So the first and biggest section is all diagonals. So everything is either a right twist or a left twist. And if you guys don't know what left twists and right twists are, they're kind of like cables, but you work them by knitting two stitches together, leaving it on the left-hand needle, and then just knitting the first one. That's a right twist. And the left twist, you have to rearrange them as if you were doing a slip-slip knit. You knit into the back of the second and then into the back of both. That's it. So the right twist and the left twist, knit and purl, make every single thing in this chapter. And I'm just showing you two things from the chapter. Then the next chapter, I wanted to start with the diagonal chapter because that's like, they're more there than anywhere else. But I realized I had a lot of little small things. And so the second chapter is all about small things. Um, like the little hashtag kind of looking things on the left that you could space out however you wanted to. And the little ones in the middle that look like small cables. And, and why is lizard called lizard? Lizard, that's somewhere else. Oh, lizards in this, this is lizard. That's in the small chapter, okay. Yeah, there you go. I just thought that I, the name jumped out of me, that's all. All right, yeah, I, I am strange at naming. <laughs> so I hope you like the names, I don't know. And then the third chapter of stitches starts to introduce horizontal elements. So with the right twist and left twist, you can only go 
one angle to the right and one, you know, one about 45 degree angle to the left. To make a straight line, we need to add something. And the obvious thing is garter stitch. So it's usually a line of garter stitch that makes the horizontal line. Like in the middle, it, there's a line of garter stitch and some um, right twists in between them and another line to make like a really fat horizontal. And the chapter after that introduces um, vertical elements. So it could either be just uh, a knit stitch or reverse stockinette, like you could see on the left. You barely notice it's there, but there really is a vertical element on the stitch on the left. And I think that looks like big knitted stitches. So I kind of yeah. like it. And it was inspired by some um, embroidery called black work, where it's worked black thread on a white, I think it's on Aida cloth. Um, and the patterns of that kind of embroidery are very grid-like, so it's really easy to change it over. Anyway, you can have um, like little mini cables where there's a right twist over a right twist over a right twist be a vertical element as well. And you see that in the other two. And then we add everything together. So the right twist, left twist, garters and ribs, so we have vertical, horizontal in both directions. Um, and that's the chapter I called compass because it, they go all directions. <laughs> and the stitch here on the left, that is a variation of the one that you said you liked. Yeah. Off the bat. And you got some baubles in here too. There's some baubles. Is that that chapter? Yeah. No, the chapter before. You, okay. You, I can't like remember. Cherries. <clears throat> Only a couple baubles. Yeah. And then one chapter includes eyelets because when you're knitting eyelets, when you're decreasing and putting a yarn over next to it, though that ends up at exactly the same slope as a right twist that you, or a left twist that you've worked every right side row. So the two things go together really well because they're at the same angle. So you can mix, um, and you can mix the twisted stitches with eyelets really well. So there's a little chapter on that. And then, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> Generally, I have a rule where I don't like to do right twists and left twists on the wrong side because I like to give people a break. But I realized that there were some things that I wanted to do that required um, working twists on the wrong side because you can get a second angle of slope. So like, look at the stitch on the right, you can get um, a angle that's closer to horizontal and you can get the 45 degree angle. So if there's one that's close to 22 or 23 degree angle and one that's 45 and the same on all three of these. So if you work the twist on the wrong side row or if you're working in the round, which is much easier, you can get um, two different slopes with your twists when it's worked every row and when it's worked every other row. So I call that extreme because I think that's harder. It's not harder to do on the wrong side row. It's harder to see where you want to put it. So you can see if you're if you're going along on the right side row, that these stitches are in a diagonal and they line up with each other, it's easy to sight see it, <laughs> like if we were singing, to um, you know, to read your knitting. Or on a wrong side row, it's much much harder because it's yeah, just like messy bunch of pearls or stitches. And then one more chapter that I call kaleidoscope because everything is a hexagon. So there are nine different patterns that all fit in a hexagon um, in this chapter and they're all interchangeable, same number of stitches. You love a hexagon. I do love, really ever do. since I wrote Knitting Nature, I have been obsessed with thinking about making things with hexagons. So then there's a whole section of knitting patterns, 15 knitting patterns just going to kind of fly through them, <laughs> but <clears throat> you can use the stitches that are written in the instructions, or you can substitute other stitches. And I try to talk through, not, not that precisely, but I talk through what you have to think about if you're putting a different stitch in. The infinity cowl is insanely easy because it doesn't have to be exactly the same number of stitches. Well, you know, there's a book someone wrote for that. What do you mean? 
about how to substitute a cable. Well, that's different than. <laughs> yes, Patty. So in the cable stitch dictionary, I have one method of like substitution and I have something similar in this book, but it's more of a percentage ah. <clears throat> in this one um, and a little less precise. I made, oh no, I didn't make one of these for myself. So the stitch that's in the center of this, oh uh, no, it, that's off to the side of this is also what's down the center of my sweater that I'm wearing. And we're about to get to that one. This is the one that was on the cover. This is the sweater that I'm wearing, but knit in a different yarn. And instead of using this stitch that makes kind of a yoke, I just put a simple cable-like twisted stitch from the Smalls chapter right down the center. And I didn't even bother to do that good a substitution. I just used the same number of stitches. And so maybe my sweater is a tiny bit bigger because there's more stock in it than twisted stitch and I don't care. <laughs> um, here we go, a little tank with that stitch that looks like big knitted stitches. Oh, I love that one. A little tabard, hat and mitts, and then a basic pullover. I did something, on what I think is kind on this sweater. The pattern stitch doesn't go clear to the edge of the sweater, clear to each side seam. It's really a panel down the center. So you can barely see it, but there's more stock in it over at the side seam. And that makes it easier to substitute stitches because you're substituting that panel and the panel can get a little bigger or a little smaller. Um, and you just put more or less stock in it in the side. You yeah, know, you can see it in, in this other shot where she's, in the chair, because you can see the side, right. and then you, okay, you can good. tell that where the stockinette is. And those in those pictures, it looks like right. it goes all and the actually, way. But look on the sleeve; you can see it on the sleeve because you see only half of the oh, big yeah, yeah. picture. You can see half a triangle, so you can see that that was just a um, panel. This one I called extreme yoke because it has one of the extreme stitches in it. But you. Um, and there's nothing else exactly like this made into a wedge. But later in the book, I give you an empty wedge so that you could build your own if you were feeling very um, energetic. <laughs> and it would not have to be an extreme stitch. This so far has been the favorite, the one people have said was their favorite. Again, it doesn't have to be this more extreme stitch. It could be a, an easier stitch on there. Um, this is a pretty basic, easy to knit cardigan. Otherwise, then we get oh, to yeah. the hexagons. <laughs> There's a hexagon scarf um, where they're j it's just four hexagons stacked one on top of another. And then um, the hexagon sweater that um, you can choose any of those nine hexagons that are earlier in the book to put in there. The front's the same as the back and the sleeve is just like a raglan sleeve. And I love the the, the rib. What happens yeah. if it, it, that's Yeah, that so I decided to echo the, um, this sweater is from the outside in because you pick up along the sleeve and along other existing pieces like there's a little triangle oh. side. And so you don't have to do any seaming because everything's picked up. And then you pick up for the ribbing and do the same angle of decreases in the ribbing. So that seemed clever to me. You could just put a straight ribbing all the way around, it's fine. <laughs> but I did it in pieces on the bottom of every triangle section of the hexagon. Yeah, I love that. And then there's a section on designing your own. And it's not that technical. It's more giving you ideas. It's not a like, if you do this, you will get that. It's much looser and freer spirited than that. There's a library of elements with um, different weights of diagonals or horizontals in it. There's more to it than this page shows. And then some planning grids, which if you can see off to the right, you can plan diagonals on the planning grid by 
you know, putting like your own drawing dark lines on there. And then once you have your pattern planned out, you have to actually put it on um, rectangular graph paper to get the shape you want. And I, there also is a sh like a sheet of rectangular graph paper if you need to copy it. Um, I do all this on my computer on in easy draw on the Mac. Um, but if you're still on pencil and paper, then that's included in the book. And then I gave these three shapes. So the yoke is built out of this yoke shape and every size is built from the 22 stitch repeat, the extreme yoke one I showed you. So you could put in your own um, pattern in there. It would have to have a fair number of twists to work out the same way, um, but you could build your own yoke. And again, with the hat and the hexagon, so if you felt like building your own, at least this would get you started. And then I have 10 lessons. Like this one's pretty basic, but really I think helpful. Checking the repeat. So once you have your pattern worked out for the number of rows and number of stitches, then you'd better duplicate it and put it on top and next to it to make sure they really do flow between each other the way you want them to. And then there's some lessons like how one thing led to another, like here, the smocking on the left. If you eliminate some of the stitches, you end up with what's in the middle. That's what was in the romantic cardigan. And then if you take even more away, you get the more ornate smocking fancy. Did I call it fancy? I can't, whatever it's called. I can't see because our pictures are on top of it. Anyway. Oh yeah, it says fancy. Fancy. Um, so that's it here. I'm going to stop sharing because now, all right, how do I do this? <laughs> questions. It's and, questions. And there are, there are lots of comments. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, so someone said, uh, where, where was it about um, whatever book it, it is? It's by Nora, so I'm buying it. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, Charlotte. Oh, yeah. Sue says, doesn't matter the topic. I'll add it to my collection. Love, Nora. Um, a lot of love for the hexagon sweater. Um, okay. Oh, Freaky Geek says, I see flowers and honeycombs. Uh, mm. Sue says, an awesome book. Love the hexagon sweater. So Mayak, it's a, the Mayak um, baby yak in that sweater. And I know that they're having a few more knit up with different stitches. So that's not live yet. Don't look yet, but I know it's coming. So now the um, class that you're going to do for affinity with the with the yoke and and teaching people how to do different sections and like design their own mm. plug and play sections are any of those going to be all right you have to remind me did i say they would be twisted stitches no no you didn't it the the, the mm. this was a the, that class was before this book came out it was all about um i've done a lot of that with cables as well yeah it was a play, <clears> play <throat> yoke. So I, I wondered if any of those were twisted. I was planning to teach it about cables, but I think it wouldn't be too hard to have both for you. <laughs> Very exciting. Or maybe the classes hmm. with the cables, but you know, maybe the 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 you were going to design one for the retreat, so maybe that's twisted. You Get know, people excited about the book. You will have to remind me. I know, I will. I know, it seems like- I read, you know, just finishing this other book in my head, like I can't retain anything. I try to write everything in my bullet journal, but still you have to like find it in the bullet journal. So I get one of these every year from yes. Modern Daily Knitting. And can I, can I tell you that I don't really know what bullet journaling is? Okay, so I, st because Kay and Anne were talking about it, I'm on my third year of using it. So this is what it means to me. Before I learned how to use it, I had sticky notes everywhere and they would like, they were on my computer and they would fall off or my extra screen, whatever. And so if I was, I was trying to remember things, it would be a sticky note. Everything that was a sticky note is now in the bullet journal. Um, I had a to-do list almost every day. Um, the to-do list is now in the journal. Um, so it's daily, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, like, and you don't do it until it's the day. You don't set it up until you need it, um, which is the true bullet journal, the way the guy who invented it did it, because I am one of those people 
that if you have a journal that's already all set up and you don't write in it and there are tons of empty pages, then mm. I give up. That's it. I give up. Um, but the bullet journal, like you could, I, this hasn't happened to me. I haven't gone without using it, but you could go without it for two months and then you just start right in where you ended last time. And what's with like the dots and then, and why, why do people talk about taking classes to learn how to bullet journal? That's what I didn't get. That sounds a little extreme. I know. And so, so it. So people do all these pretty beautiful things. I think it defeats the purpose. The purpose is to organize your life. Now okay. I do, let's say. See, I heard I, I had to take a class and I'm like, and I'm out. Right? I put a pretty thing in, but you do not have to. Okay. This is my sticky notes, meeting notes. I used to grab like any old meet, um, any old notebook and write the meeting notes, phone meeting, whatever. And then I didn't know what notebook it was in. Right. And I have five different notebooks. They're never with me, whatever. So if my, my bullet journal, any meeting note is in it. Anything that was on a sticky note is in it. Anything that was my to-do list is in gotcha. it. And of course, things like passwords, stuff like that are handy. Right? Oh, now, now I know where I can get all now of you know where passwords. To well, I use a, like an app called OmniFocus, but That's not unlike my brain, I'm using maybe 5% of what it can do. So I, it does all these other things that I'm right. like. Also, you wake up in the morning and you have 10 million thoughts and you can't do anything else until you write those down somewhere, or you just need to get those thoughts. I don't do like long form journaling that this is very short, like, you know, write to Karen or <laughs> like, you've been meaning to do that, but you're holding it in your yeah. head. You don't want it in your head. You want it somewhere where you can check it off later. The 10,000 thoughts that I wake up with in the morning are not things that I want written down anywhere. All right. They're things that I would like excised from my brain to not come back ever. Sometimes writing them down helps, but I have to admit that I don't usually write down the things that need to be excised. <laughs> Just, you know, it's a dark time. There are things in my brain, although it's getting lighter, I think. I definitely have. Uh, yeah, I have not been sleeping well since, well, since I was asked to be the editor-in-chief of Vogue Mini. <laughs> and I was writing the book, like the two things together. Can I tell you a little something? Can I tell you, uh, uh, there's something, I'm trying to figure out how to say this without, I, I don't mean any offense to any, to any, any past anything, but there's a very difficult sweet spot to find, to try to please, not everyone, you can never yeah. please anyone, ever. But Vogue has gone through many um, iterations over the years. And many, and I love, you know, I have my Vogues from, I don't know how many years, so many years. But it's a difficult balancing act to find the sweet spot between runway inspirational pure art but no one would want to knit it mm. and the knit simple the the beauty of knit simple like those types of sweaters from knit simple which is like oh these are great everyday pieces that i want that i just want great staple pieces in my wardrobe there's a very difficult land in between there right aspirational inspirational but also wearable and i think y'all pretty pretty much nailed that That's that middle that that sweet spot some of it also has to do with photography and oh. styling and um and that's, you know, that's hard too. We, um, I actually can show some pictures, but we tr we tried to to focus on um, what am I trying to say? Use different kinds of photography within the one magazine. Um, to like, if you go to a fashion magazine, usually there are different stories in the magazine with different photographers. So there's a different look. Could be the same photographer with different looks. But um, so each story like really was approached in a different way. Right. So I'm going to share my screen. Oh yeah, more stuff. It's it happens to be in the same, same slideshow. All right. So let's see, play. 
and then get out of the questions. And then, so this is the first issue that I was the editor in chief of. And Mary Jane Mecklestone helped me a lot, a lot, a lot. She did a lot of the work because I was designing all the things for the book that I'm still suffering writing right now. But both of us felt very alike, like we like a lot of the same photography and kinds of styles. And so one of these stories was out in the ocean <laughs> um, of Maine, the coast of Maine, and that's where this cover comes from. Um, and a, a we didn't plan this from the beginning, but it ended up being an issue about friendship. So I asked Mary Jane to help me because I knew we had the strong friendship that we could work together and make this happen. And then it turned out that, you know, we were photographing during COVID and we had to try to keep the step, everything as small as possible, as little contact as possible. So we ended up picking models that were also friends with each other. So two photo shoots, each with two models, and they are friends. So these two women were friends and very comfortable with each other and took the tests they were supposed to take and everything. I did not know and that. So the only place you'll find this in the magazine um, is the editor's letter, which is a little different because our new art director, um, Emily Jones is amazing. And she thought of some new ways to do things, but I'm gonna get to that. <laughs> so there are a couple things that are different. Like um, it's pretty much standard now in the industry to fit bust 30, to 60 something. So everything in that it can be sized um, is going from 30 to 62 rather than a few things being pulled out as having an expanded size range, everything. There, there might be, I mean, this hasn't happened so far. There might be something geometric that just couldn't go that small or that big. Um, that's happened in my book, but as much as humanly possible, anything that can be graded to these sizes is. Um, and then like I was talking about the photography, we <clears throat> tried to have three different photography styles. The first two were the same photographer, Greta Rebus, and she did, she um, does stories for New York Times and National Geographic. We're really lucky to get her during this time when she couldn't travel. Oh. Um, yeah. And so she did this beautiful photography at the seashore. And then she also did the sort of close up high angle photography for a small color work story. And Jack Deutsch, who has done almost all of the fashion photography for Vogue Knitting for the past 10 years, if not, and, and before that as well, yeah. just all of it. Um, he did a story for us at an Airbnb in Providence. And that's um, the story you see on the right. So a little different from some of the studio stuff from before, but he's capable of doing quite a lot of different things. Yeah. Um, we added things so that you knew more about the contributors. So a little picture of every contributor, every writer or designer um, was in the beginning. And then the editor's letter, I just love Emily's idea of having it be like a collage of inside information like that sketch is my sketch for one of the sweaters that I designed for the magazine and in the lower right there's Mary Jane trying a sweater on as it um as it came into everything came to her for her to keep for photography so that I could she did because she did most of the work that's what I'm saying um and so she took pictures of herself in the sweater so I could understand what it was going to look like. So things like that are smattered all over this page instead of just a letter. Um, little bits I'm of- I'm having such a, such a deja vu about this editor's letter page. I feel like there was an, a tiny indie magazine that I read like years ago that I used to read. And- Well, no idea is new, Patty. <laughs> Pardon? No idea is new. I know, it, but it was like a zine where she was just sharing her own little scrap. Like there'd be like a piece of, like a picture of a little note page or, yeah. Yep. That, that was a little more of a sneak peek behind. Yeah, so life. we could get pictures of us with our masks on behind the scenes and um, a little more casual in there, which I like. Oh, Jane, it was Jane. Jane, Jane, yeah. yeah. 
So this is more, this is like a real spread from the magazine as it actually looks in the magazine. And then I have some pictures like this one doesn't show up in the magazine. We took the picture of the hat also on Aaron, um, as well as on Trinette, who you saw on the other page. Um, so then you, you'll get to see a few pictures that weren't in the magazine. So what I have to tell you about this day is <clears throat> it's 95 degrees oh. honey. And the Tr Trinette and Aaron are dying and sweating and dewy and, and we're waiting and waiting for light that's better because really sunny light is not great for photography. Um, a little cloud or shadow or it like works way better. So we ended up taking a lot of the shots late, late afternoon because it was worth waiting for them to get good shadow to like really see this cable. <laughs> um, this is one of my designs and this one is too. So this is the one you saw the sketch in the beginning. That was my sketch for this one. And then um, Greta, the photographer, thought it'd be fun for Aaron to put on two sweaters at once. Because <laughs> it wasn't, you know, 95. Of course, you can put on two sweaters at once. But it was funny. And it's fun to do some of these spur of the moment things. Like sometimes you can get something really great. Then this is the coloring color story where there are four items where color work <clears throat> is kind of worked in without being hard. Like this is very easy. And Tarja on the right, Latvian braiding on the left. And Deborah Newton designed this sweater with a slip stitch color work. And there's an article about sewing in the zipper. So she tells you how to not be afraid of sewing in that zipper. And using knit and pearl combinations is also a nice way to mix color. You've seen that one. And the third story was all about, you know, nesting at home like we all did during COVID and you want to be in your comfortable sweater. And so these two models are also friends. I started with Chantal because I had worked with her before when she was a makeup artist. She's both a model and a makeup artist. And I knew I wanted to use her. She has a bust of about 50. So um, she's real. She's a beautiful, real woman who um, will speak to a lot of our customers because she's the same size that they are and she looks great in these sweaters and obviously you can tell she's a pleasure to work with because she's so nice this is a genuine smile and um Andrea was her friend she's done makeup with her before and and modeled with her before and so I think you can see in the picture like the genuine friendship angle comes through they were really talking to each other and it was it was very very much a pleasure so here's Chantel in the, a nice wrapped vest. <laughs> and this is our only crochet piece in the magazine. We also have a little 10 question profile of Vincent Williams, the designer, um, which is a fun one because he's a fun guy. <laughs> it's also in the article, I mean, in the magazine. A sweatshirt that's nicer than a sweatshirt. <laughs> And because you can have fun at home, shorts. And you'll notice some really nice details on these shorts. Like at the top, there's some short rows that make it so the back doesn't come down too low and give you plumber's crack, right? And at the very bottom, um, also your leg is covered a little better because of short row detail down there. I love this sweater on Chantal. A nice little cardigan that gives a fitted look, but it's um, it's really not it's really not a waist tie. It ties at the waist. What am I trying to say? But it's not a belt. It's something that's knit in. A little poncho-like sweater, and something that could be your first sweater. <clears throat> and I also liked Emily, the art director, wanted to do that first story with quotes in it. And um, this one really tied into the friendship theme. Together we can face challenges as deep as the ocean and as high as the sky. Now I can stop sharing. Oh, so how, how, did, um, how did the Mary Jane partnership come to be? How, did you 
did you realize you just saw the schedule and thought, oh, no, no, no? Well, I, I couldn't have said yes without someone to help me because I was already in May, like knew that I was going to be behind with my book, like even that I was going to have to work hard to right. do it. <clears throat> and um, I said I could do it only if I could find someone to to be doing a lot of the work while I still had like the overseeing qualities. Right. <laughs> um, that's how it came to be. And she was the person that I thought of first. We, and... Well, most of the time was spent on the phone and on Zoom and on text, but we live like two and a half hours from each other. While she was live on Zoom with me. Did she tell you that? <laughs> there was a text between us. Well, she, yeah. she, she was live <laughs> on YouTube live here on a quarantine live. And I, and there's a buzzing and she's, sorry, I got to take this. This is Nora. Oh dear. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. And I said, no, no, I, I get that. I'll just, so we just, I just chatted because I knew what y'all were up <laughs> going to through. Mm -hmm. So, right. um, yeah, so we, the YouTube live audience has uh, experienced the, the partnership. <laughs> the making of the magazine. The yeah. making of the magazine. Uh, when do you start working on the next issue? Oh, are you kidding? We're, we're photographing in a few weeks. Oh, oh, that soon. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, so the design call was in November. I started out really early. Um, and then um, we decided on things like in January. And now the sweaters are due in a few weeks and the photography is a little bit after that. Oh, and I've already put out the call for the one after that, the one that's- um, oh, Somehow I fell off the list. No, you did fall off the list. I, I am off. The, yeah, I, I do not. I, see, fall, I fell off the list. I don't know I how. I tell everybody like I, I don't see the list. There is a um, mailing list that you get on by going to Vogue Knitting, the like front page of Vogue Knitting, go clear to the bottom. And it says like design submissions or some, something obvious. Oh, I don't yeah, I just used to I used to get them every month when Trish when it was Trisha. But I think. Uh, I haven't done anything. I used to do something for the magazine pretty, pretty well, much every taken, issue. As far as I know, no one has been taken off the list, but it just, I think not. when Trisha left, there was in hmm. the, in the transition, she may have had her own list, but this is a mailing list. That's like a blog, like oh. or not a blog, like a, yes, yeah, it's like a blog. It's like MailChimp. Like it, some, I hope it is that. So that I want to say the wrong one, but. Um, anyway, get back on the list. <laughs> so that, and then oh, Charlotte's saying she has to go to, um, she has to go to, it, it's 2100 here. So I must leave you uh, a no, no screen time for one hour before sleep. So she's saying, Fair. Charlotte should quick, sign up for the list too. A quick good night. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Shannon said, love the photography, very natural, lovely lighting. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Um, Paul, will you have a design? <laughs> Paul says, well, Patty, will you have a design one of the future issues? Well, no, because I fell off the list, but I'll, but I'll, we'll. There we'll, will be more issues after that. I know, that. I know. So no, I just have, haven't. All right, you should write to me because, um, because there's been another design call since the one that we're about to photograph and you might want to get in on that one. Yeah, and I've been bad. I mean, to be honest, I, I haven't, I, uh, I, 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 I magazined out for a while because I was doing like seven magazines at once and I was, right. and you know, just, and then I kind of hit a point where I'm like, no more magazines. So I, I was only self-publishing, but for, for it, but it, with the exception of Vogue. So for Trisha, anything she needed, you know, she always got. Oh, did my mic? Okay. Anyway. Basically, sorry. I should ask you for something specific. You can do whatever you like, whenever you like. Um, hi from New Zealand. It's 9 a.m. Oh, so it's nighttime some places. It's bedtime, afternoon tea, and morning all morning. wrapped into one. Good morning. Um, oh, Marsha asks, and I'm gonna I'm gonna answer what I think, and then you can answer. It says errata has always been a big problem with Vogue. Is this situation being addressed? So I will I will say this as a designer who who like I said used to design for seven magazines. Of the seven magazines I used to design for the errata for Vogue was always uh, less than the other six. So I will say this about magazines. It's an incredibly tight turnaround. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, uh, 
errata happens in magazines. It happens more in magazines than in um, books and by far less than self-publishing because when you self-publish, it's your schedule and you can take your time and you can check and check and check and check. Mm -hmm. But I will, I, here's what I know from, from my life with Tricia. I know that sometimes designers turn things in late, not me. I was always early. Um, Also, I think that always is probably an extreme word. I think there have been periods where there were more problems than others. Um, Anyway. But I mean, that's, that's the one thing that I learned from my, when I transitioned from a knitter to a designer and then a designer that worked for magazines is I learned what that schedule was. It's a very tight schedule. Crazy tight. Right. And there and, um, is no, there is no test knitting that doesn't exist in the magazine world. Mm-hmm. There's sample knitting. Like someone right. has made the sample. Um, in, a, in some cases it's the designer. And in some cases it's someone that the designer sent their instructions to. Right. And I mean, the one right. thing I remember Vogue used to do these like panel discussions at Vogue Knitting Live. And, and I remember being on one a uh, panel discussion with a bunch of designers and it was like me and um, uh, I think Fiona Ellis was there and Josh and um, uh, Ma- uh, oh, Maggie, the adorable Irish, um, I forgot her name. Anyway, there was a bunch of us mm-hmm. and, and Carla was the moderator, I think. Mm-hmm. Or, oh no, it was Renee. It was a long time ago, it was okay. Renee. So this was back when Renee did the grading. Remember yep. like this was a long time ago. And someone asked something about like either your inspiration or your goal, so, something like that. And everyone's answering very lofty things, very lofty designer-like answers. And my answer was something, oh, you know what? I think the question was, what do you want, what do you believe uh, or what do you wish is the, 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 your, what defines you as a designer something like that, very lofty. Or what's your goal? And I think I answered something like uh, that I never miss a deadline and my numbers are right. And, and Renee was like, um, because I think that's important. I think it's important to not, to not miss a deadline and put the publisher in an, in a difficult position Hmm. to have to scramble and, and, you know, which happens in magazines. Yeah, and if you think you're gonna miss a deadline, please be in good communication, (laughs) just to everyone else, not to you. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, there was one time I had a situation Mm -hmm. with yarn and it was, um, and it wasn't the yarn company's fault either, it was the mill. It was um, beautiful, beautiful yarn from Sugarbush and it was a brand new yarn. So it was, you know, one of those things where you get it from, it wouldn't even ball band yet. It was from the mill, right? And I was the very first one to get it. And, pre-bag so of course you assume it's all the same dye lot and I'm knitting 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 and you know it's not sometimes until you spread it out on the blocking board that you're like there's a straight line straight across the back where the the dye lot issue and I and I called Trisha and I told her and I said can you please can you just photoshop this and she's like we don't photoshop we really so so sorry. So I had to rip and I said, okay, then what's your real deadline? Not the fake deadline you give designers knowing that you're going to miss it, but like the, you know me, I'll deliver it impeccably finished and perfectly blocked and I'll get on the subway and I'll put it in your hand. And she said two more weeks. And so I, I got it done, but, but yeah, stuff comes in all different, you know, sometimes states, but um. Yeah. Anyway, that that's that's that was my experience. Is is you're dependent on a lot of people, so many people in that chain, right? And the and chain has to We're hold. dependent on the U.S. Postal Service. Oh God, I know. Right, let's not go too deep there. But I have to tell you that we've been getting stuff from Japan and France faster than from places in. The, well, and they all, everybody here knows that um, Affinity Junior, I did a kid's version of the sweater and I had a pullover and a cardigan and the pullover I made for my friend's daughter and I shipped it on uh, oh, priority 
to Dare on December 2nd or something, it took five weeks, two day priority air, five weeks. I sent, I sent this book to our art director in San Diego and Mary Jane, who lives two and a half hours from me on the same day in the same post office, the same kind of package. Emily in San Diego got it four days later and Mary Jane got about eight weeks later. And oh, she's like, I could have driven to her house two dozen I know. Hours, whatever. I know. So that, that is one thing I don't miss, although I'm, I'm going to start mm -hmm. again is shipping, um, shipping samples to Gail. It happened once with, with a sweater that I shipped to Gail for photography and Gail talk about going above and beyond as a photographer. She went, and this was a, this was a day where she had multiple things to shoot. She went to the post office and, and, and like stood there for hours. Well, they looked asked, for yeah. And they found it there. It, it, it was sitting there in the post office. It just right. hadn't done that final. Right. I mean, that yeah. is not the photographer's job. All right. Let's talk about something happier. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that was happy. She found it. And yeah, she that photographed is, it. Oh great. my God. I love her so much. Yeah. <laughs> that to me, that was, that, that was the uh, very happy end to the story. I once had a photo shoot with Gail and um, we showed up in the same outfit. <laughs> we looked the same, the same linen shirt and shorts and oh sand. My God, I love her so much. I just, I, 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 oh, someday, someday I'll see all of you again. Gail I, gave a great it talk. It's like it's going to happen. So that's good. I think it's going to happen. I mean, David's getting vaccinated. My uh, now it's down to just um, once once David gets it, it's just my brother, his wife, and me because my mom and dad have both had it. Now David's mm -hmm. getting vaccinated, and of course my sister's a doctor, so she was the first one. Right, that's good. Get it. So I'll be the last though because I'm the baby. Well, I'll be in the fifty to sixty-four year old group, which actually is supposed to happen sometime between March. In May. Oh, but, for your state? Really? Mm -hmm. Which is better than being 25, right? Because anyway. Yeah. Like, they're organized. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Like, oh, you know what? I should check New York. Maybe I'm getting it sooner than I thought. I just, I knew I'm going to get it by June, but maybe I will get it earlier. I mean, I'm- Yeah, check I'm, the site for, we, there's a state site for the, like the vaccination plan. Right. Because um, I'm old. I just turned 60. I'm, I'm not that far behind you. I'm knocking <laughs> on the door right, I'm right. I, <laughs> my husband was so annoyed that, that he missed the, uh, the, the, that one age range by one year. He's like, ah. Oh. Right. But then asthma, woohoo. Oh, yeah, great, yay. <laughs> It was very exciting. I wish we could actually go all the way to Montreal since we're, we're driving um, almost, almost to the border, but Canada won't let us in anyway. Yeah. But we'll wave at Canada. We'll right. wave at all our friends in Canada. Right. I miss all our friends in Canada. Um, oh my God. Okay. I'm just catching up on um, questions on just a lot of, uh, I love you. I love you. Oh, someone, <laughs> when I said, I, I wake up with 10,000 thoughts that I don't want. Elsie, right. uh, Elsie said, write it down and burn it. Yeah, I like that. Um, <laughs> oh, this is so true. When we're talking about, uh, there's only so many um, things you can do with the knit and pearl. Uh, same with music. And that is so true. A, fr a friend of mine who's a composer, who's a Tony winning composer, got really excited about a new song jotted it down, super happy, went to bed, woke up the next morning to sit down at the piano to play the song he wrote last night that he was so excited about. And he started playing it and he said, oh he God, I just wrote short people. Short people got no reason. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't like that one. I am only five feet tall. <laughs> okay. Because you you're not much taller. <laughs> no, I'm five foot three, but you know oh. that that's not he got so much flack from people saying he was um, he was like bashing short people. And he's like, OK, I was making fun of racists, but OK. You right. Know. <laughs> but it kind of isn't he short, too? Anyway, he is. He is short. Um, 
So do do you, what's the pub date? Do you know the pub date of the new book? In um, I'm yeah, it will either be January or February of 2022. January, February of 2022. Okay, so okay, so in September, assuming we're all to, 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 together again in person for affinity. You'll have these to sign for people, right? Yes. We can, we can do that. The we'll market. discuss how to get them. <laughs> well, and yeah, people can um, bring theirs that they've already purchased too. So that Right. Be yeah, because it'll be quite a long time after the launch date. So I hope that a lot of people already have them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you'll probably already be in the fourth press and uh, being paperback by then. Paperback. <laughs> That takes and Nora's like, I don't do paperback. I'm a oh, hardcover only. I think nature went to paperback. I know. Uh, all right, hold on. Let me catch up. Okay. Oh my God, it's after, it's 310. How long were we supposed to go? Well, we usually just talk until we're bored. We're chatting. They, they're usually in the ish of 45 or an hour, but um, you were all, you like had a thing. Because the slideshows. You yeah. presented. I mean, normally people just roll out of bed and come and chat with me. <laughs> This is very exciting. And you have a bag of yarn behind you. So this is just my stage. I'm, I'm actually in the Vogue Knitting has a small office in Harrisville, New Hampshire for me and the yarn editor, Kate. And we just moved in a couple weeks ago. So behind me, I have an old poster from Barocco. So I have some color and this yarn matched it. So I put the yarn there. You know, I was actually wondering where you worked. So, so it is, is so that, I have a studio here too, about 200 yards away. No, no, I know. But for Vogue, is that, oh. is that just a, a COVID office or is that going to be your office for, for real? No, it's for real? going to be our office. Yeah. Nice. But we're just starting to get it settled in. Anyway. And then will you come to New York from time to time? For the live events. Okay. Just, you know. Maybe yeah. other times. I don't know. But just wondering when you might be in, in town. Right. Oh, Angela said, I just bought the hardcover of Knitting Nature at the Strand the last time I was in NYC. Yeah. Oh, the Strand. That's the best. Um, yeah, maybe by, not maybe, by January. Right. We will have another Vogue Knitting Live in New York. That would sure. be amazing. Oh, and by you, January. Yeah. Anyway. I, didn't, I didn't go to... 2020. Nobody went to 2000. Oh, no, no, 2000. No, Sorry. nobody went oh, this year. I know, I'm doing the same thing. Right. I... 2020, <laughs> January, we had live events, and February, we had live events, and Everything. then it was over. And then shut down. Yep. Well, you didn't go January. Oh. Because I was finishing the book. Oh, right. <laughs> right. And yeah. So I went the year before. Four, but that's so that's how long it's wow. so I look forward to seeing everybody I know I was I was saying that the um the very were, were you in the very first Vogue like 11 years ago yeah I think so yep so that teacher meeting which I'll never forget oh I wasn't I, teaching oh, well, oh okay I, was. I don't so the teacher meeting was madness because it was the very first year and, you know, there wasn't the, the, it wasn't like it is now where there's a million shows, right? This was a very unique right, thing. It was amazing. So everyone's really excited. We're all in the room together. We're so excited. And Gabby can't get our attention because we're just like ah, hugging. So she stands up on the table. She stands up on the table to yell to get our attention. So I said to her, can you imagine our first show back all together? It's gonna be, it's gonna be madness. They should have a party first and then the meeting. <laughs> I know, I know. I do well, yeah, because we used to do the secret party in 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 Trisha's suite after the <laughs> teacher meeting, which was so fun. But yeah, I I don't know what I'm looking forward to more being in a classroom with students or just going to that teacher meeting, which we used to all roll our eyes eyes at and think like, oh my God, is this over? Can we go out to dinner? And now I'm so looking forward to the teacher meeting. Right. I'm just so looking forward to being in a room with all you, all you crazy people. It'll <sighs> be 
-hmm. Anyway. All right. I should go. You have a, um, a book to write and you're probably like, okay, could you stop talking? Cause I have to write a book. Now it's going to take me like an hour to settle down just the way I work, but. <laughs> well, I thank you so much. I can't believe that you brought like this whole presentation. I'm so impressed. <laughs> it makes, it makes this feel almost like a professional podcast, which is totally not because every time I forget to say, and if you like it, hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. See, I never do that. I never do that. I'm completely, you know, completely unorganized. Um, oh, no, uh, Marsha wants to know, Nora, you're on the schedule for a Zoom presentation at Big Apple Knitters Guild in June. Still happening? Well, June, yes, I better check my, my calendar to make sure it's still on there. <laughs> I would say, Marsha, if it's in the bullet journal, it's in. If it's not in the bullet journal, Let forget it. Let me check the bullet journal. <laughs> Are you seriously checking the bullet journal? It says B-A-K-G. That's it, baby. All right. Yes. We have a saying here that we, we uh, um, say to each other before we leave. And there's a 30 second delay. So I always let people know it's coming so that people have time to type it in. But we, um, when we leave, we always say, so you can type it in. If you know it, you know what it is. Wash your hands, don't touch your face, wear a mask, knit on. So um, hopefully soon we'll um, not have to say that anymore. But I'm so, it was so nice to see you. Nice to see you, Patty. I, and thanks, everybody. And I hope you, you know, write four or five more books between now and the next time I see you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> no, enough of the books. Um, Ah, uh, Sue says, I'm already looking forward to your next books. So, and on that note, okay. All right. Thank you so much. Bye.